I can make a start on all the uh, upper bits and the side skirts. I've just given these uh, a washing detergent. Remove any uh, greasy thumbprint marks or any other plastic left over from sanding and cutting. So they're all being cleaned and dry now. Ready for that paint job. So I've been doing some sort of pre-shading. Solid black underneath and then like a, a very dark red hull colour at the sides. Now I was going to apply the white first but I think I'm going to apply the NATO green which is the engine area. And I'm going to paint the barrel as well. Now they've got 056 here which I can't find but I'm going to paint it the same colour as the uh, rear engine. So that's the first colour. Let that dry and then I'll start on the white. So I've just masked off the um, areas and I'm going to apply the white next. I'm going to do a um, two colour system. Highlight which will be the pure white and uh, a shadow colour which is like an off white almost a grey. And I'll do that for all the colours, the, um, the blue and the brown. So I'll apply the shaded colour first. So the white paint's been left to dry overnight. I'm now ready to apply the uh, second colour. Uh, first thing I did was scan this image in and then blew it up to the size of the actual um, side skirt part, which I think is 197 millimetres. And as you can see here, uh, using the uh, printout, I've cut out some masks, just for the side skirt. There's no point doing it for the uh, rest of the tank because of the complex curves. But by starting off with the side skirts, it will give me a good guide for when I come to masking on top of the tank. So the next thing to do is to blank off the uh, white patches. So that's the uh, white areas masked off. What a nightmare that was. Uh, there will be uh, overspray somewhere on the line, I'm sure of it. See how it goes. So I'm going to paint the blue and then once that's painted, mask that off and then paint the brown. I must also mention that there are discrepancies in the pattern and photographs. I don't know whether the actual uh, scheme varied from tank to tank or whether it's just a standard uh, pattern. But even on here you'll notice, or I noticed anyway, that uh, certain things wouldn't cross-reference uh, with the side skirt masks. So you'll have this white square here which goes over the top of this uh, box but it should in fact extend a bit further out. Silly things like that. So I have made um, some alterations. So it's taken me nearly three hours to mask the last colour off ready for the brown. I've lost the will to live. So I'm just going to, um, because I start to lose track, it's just such a mess. <laughs> making sure that I've covered the right areas up and not left areas that I should have covered uh, left open. So um, I've double checked, so I'm hoping I'm okay. So that's a brown added, or more like a bronzy colour. The base colour was uh, uh, NATO brown, mixed with a bit of hull red and dark grey. 
As you may not tell whether it's too dark or too light till I start taking some of the masking off. But for now, I'm just gonna let it dry. It's always for some trepidation when you start peeling off masks, what I was gonna find underneath all that uh, crap. I was pleasantly surprised. The turret came out better than the body. And what I mean by that is that uh, there's a few more bits of overspray, little bits of blemishes here and there on the body than there is on the turret. So I shall uh, attend to those. And then once I'm happy with those, I shall seal both assemblies with a coat of satin varnish. What I did forget while I was so engrossed with those two assemblies uh, was the bottom half of the tank at the front. So I need to finish that off. Now I'm going to just um, start dry brushing some highlights. Uh, I'm going to start with the turret first, especially this big area here, uh, with some oils. You can see I've just mixed a, a light bluish grey. So I'm happy with that. As soon as I've experimented on the uh, hook there. I've just masked off the other areas. Don't want to get the highlight on anything else. And it may not be um, standing out now, but you need to build it up. So if I think that's uh, not enough, I can come back. And I've also got to remember that uh, there'll be a panel wash added to this. So the highlight will be accentuated even more once the black wash is on or brown wash. So I think that will do. So that's the dry brushing finish now on both assemblies. I did the brown and like the blue, I masked off the areas uh, just so I didn't get any uh, contamination on the other color patches. So the next thing to do is to uh, add a wash, but before I can do that, I need to let the uh, oil on this surface dry properly. So I'll probably leave it a couple of days before I start adding a wash. I don't really want to reactivate the uh, oil I've just dry brushed on. Now the uh, dry brushing effect has had a few days to dry, so should be right to add the washes next. But before I um, do that, I've added the decals. They're extremely matte in finish. Uh, they've gone down okay, actually. Not many of them. So we've got uh, one, two, three. Uh, what else? The, uh, the Union flag. So all these uh, are left over. I've used a couple of colours to create this sludge colour. It looks black here, but it's, it's almost like a greeny, a greeny black. Uh, one of the main ingredients is the olive green, burnt umber, and lamp black. So I'm just going to go over certain areas where there's uh, excess wash and just uh, soak it up with a, a dry brush. So once the wash had dried thoroughly, just with a cloth, 
with a small amount of thinner on, uh, just went over the top. I've also um, added a wash to the rest of the colours. My idea was originally just to uh, add a different colour wash to each different colour. But in the end I just used one wash and it's a very dark bluey grey wash. So with the major work done now, I either wash and the highlighting, I can start assembling everything now. Uh, one thing I have done, I've done the glaze parts. So these all need cutting out now and adding, but I think before I do that, my first port of call will be to add uh, all the wheels and the tracks to the lower body. I talked earlier on about uh, weathering the tracks and wheels and probably doing that when they're all assembled. Uh, the only additional thing I've added uh, is a grey pastel to the face of the rubber. And I'll decide whether to add any more weathering to the actual running gear once it's all assembled. So I'm going to add the uh, wheels using uh, PVA glue. Idle wheel. Add the sprocket to the actual track. Right, just let that all set, and I'll start on the uh, top bits. Now this mantlet cover, or whatever it's called, um, it's a weird rubbery stuff, and I wasn't too sure what kind of paint to use. So I've just used uh, acrylic paint and a wash. I don't know when I fit it in whether it'll all rub off or crack off. It's good to go. The barrel. So I'm just going to let the glue go off on these baskets before I handle this anymore. Before I move on to adding the uh, top of the tank body to the bottom of the tank, I just want to quick run through the turret now that it's finished-ish. One thing I wish I had done was put the uh, this mantlet cover, added it to the turret before I even painted anything. There's no good reason why I left it off, no reason at all. You can still attach this barrel uh, after you've painted all this uh, with this in situ. Uh, I took all sorts of um, chunks and paint off this, adding it to the actual uh, turret. So 
Uh, what else? Uh, it would have been nice to have a, a couple of figures to the turret. Would have had a bit of life to it, but hey ho. Uh, the other thing, I think there are some um, aerials to go on top here. Other than that, I think we're done with the turret. So let's get on with finishing the body of the tank. So I'm just pulling the side skirts out gently for those uh, braces inside just to click into place, which they have done. On hindsight, um, we're doing it this way, I should have left them off. So that's all the peripherals added to the body of the tank now, all finished, I think. There were a couple of pieces I left off, these photo etch brackets, which attach to the light cluster to this plate at the front here. Um, far too fiddly for me. So just one more thing to add and then uh, I think I'm finished. So a very nicely detailed tank, went together reasonably well and an interesting colour scheme which is what uh, made me build it. So I hope you like the end results and I want to thank you for watching and I do hope to see you for the next video.